Isaiah chapter number 40. A very familiar verse I want to look at today. We'll begin reading in verse 28. The Bible says, Hast thou not known? You'd think in America everybody would know about the Lord. But we're living in a perverse and wicked generation, and many do not know the truths that you and I have been privy to. It says, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the blessings of being a child of God. We thank you for the promises afforded to us in the Word of God. We're thankful that, God, you cannot lie. Lord, help us to not only embrace, but claim and live by the promises of your truth. Now, Father, as we come to you in prayer, we pray for our dear sister, Miss Crystal. She's not feeling well this morning. We pray you'd touch her and you put that great hand of grace upon her. Lord, we know you're the great physician and you have a balm of Gilead. We pray you'd touch her this morning. We pray for Miss Lynn the same. Had to go home. She's not feeling well. Pray you'd touch her. Lord, we pray for Brother Bob, who's been sick. You touch him. Lord, we pray for Brother Jim and his upcoming surgery. Lord, you'd be with the surgeons and the doctors and nurses. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, he'd have a positive and good outcome for his thumb. And then, Lord, we pray for little Samantha up there in the hospital, Lord, uh, not doing well. I pray you'd touch her. pray she'd be able to start eating and drinking on her own. God, that uh, she'd be able to come home soon. I pray for Brother Tony and Miss Brandy. I know they're very concerned. That's their child. That's their baby. And God, I pray that, Lord, you would help them and encourage them today. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd sit down amongst us. Lord, I know it's gotten cold outside. I know that we face a lot of adversity. Lord, I know that Lord, uh, sometimes uh, it's not conducive for us to worship, but Lord, it's always right for us to worship, for you are worthy of our praise. So Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd help us. I pray that, Lord, uh, what you have put in my heart, I'd be able to convey to these thy people. Lord, strengthen them, encourage them, edify them today. And God, may we leave forth, as Brother Thad's already prayed, may we leave forth closer to you and better than, Lord, when we came in. Have your will and way now. Father, if there's any amongst us today unsaved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Bless as only you can, and will not fail to bow these unworthy heads, and bless you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things this morning. I want you to notice, first of all, the attributes of the Almighty. We find in verse number 28 that the Bible says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. Friends, uh, we can take refuge in the fact that our God doesn't faint, our God's not weary, and there is no searching of His understanding. Uh, A lot of people have the perception that God's sitting on the throne, uh, wringing His hands, worried about what's going on in this world. Uh, Friend, if you study the Bible, you'll find that uh, uh, from the beginning God told us what would happen in these days. Uh, It's not caught God by surprise. Uh, He's not upset about a thing. Uh, 
He's God. Uh, uh, he fainteth not. Uh, 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 my dear friends, uh, uh, He's not stressed out about anything. Uh, he's not worried about anything. Uh, hey, there is no searching of His understanding. Uh, 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 we are finite beings uh, and we are limited. Uh, but we serve an infinite God who is unlimited, uh, who took nothing and made everything, uh, who is alive, who is on the throne, and is controlling everything going on in this world. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, we see some of His attributes. Notice, if you will, the actions of the Almighty. In verse 29, it says, He giveth power to the faint. I say hallelujah. Uh, there's times when we feel like we can't put one foot in front of the other, but all of a sudden, there we go. We just keep walking. Where did that strength come from? The glory world. It came from God. Uh, goes on to say that uh, uh, to them that have no might, he increases strength. Uh, uh, there's been times every one of us was out for the camp, but God come walking by, uh, picked us up, and gave us strength uh, uh, to go on down the road. Uh, look at verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 there are folks all around us. Uh, 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 they can't make things ends meet. They can't uh, overcome obstacles. They're overcome by tragedies that come into their lives. Uh, but the children of God uh, uh, get strength from God Himself uh, that no matter what comes in our lives, uh, He's promised not to put more on us than we can bear. Uh, and we find uh, the actions of the Almighty, but then notice the assurance in the Almighty. Verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord. Now can I say all of this hinges on waiting on the Lord, and that is diametrically opposed to everything we want. We want everything right now. We don't want to wait on the Lord. We don't want to wait on anything. Hmm? We go to a restaurant, and if, if the server's not there in two minutes with their drink, and if uh, 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 five minutes later our food's not there, we're all upset for poor service. You know, it does take a while to cook stuff. Well, we're used to running through McDonald's, and they throw it at us in a bag as we're driving by. We don't wait on nothing. We come to the house of God. If the preacher's not done by noon, we get all antsy. It just might be God wants to move. Hmm? See, we're not geared to waiting. We're geared to rushing and getting things done. It did me some good being in the islands here last week. You see, because Nas should tell you everything happens down there on island time. They wear watches, but they never look at them. This time don't mean anything. You know what? They don't have the heart disease we've got. They don't have the strokes we've got. It's a good thing they don't have the hospitals we got. Uh, but we're always in a hurry. Did you ever notice cows and horses and and you know chickens and and goats and they don't wear wristwatches. Did you ever notice a cow's not in a hurry for anything? He sits there and chews his cud all day long. It'd do us good to sit down and just chew on something all day long every now and then. But we don't like that. I don't like that. Hmm? I met with that businessman from Seattle, and he's one of them go-getters and everything, and he started talking, and I said, hey, 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 don't preach patience to me. I don't want to hear it. Hmm? Huh? I don't want to hear it. And don't pray for me to have patience. I don't want the tribulation comes with it. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, uh, what a tremendous promise uh, that is contingent upon waiting on the Lord. Uh, uh, can I say that that whole verse can be summed up in this? Uh, the, you can rely on Him, wait on Him. Uh, you can be renewed by Him. Uh, uh, you can run because of Him. Uh, and you can remain through Him. What a blessing. Uh, we can have all of that in Christ Jesus. Uh, I'm interested in the middle of that. It says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm interested 
in that phrase they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Eagles are always a type of a Christian in the Scriptures. Now it amazes me that throughout the Bible there is a study called typology and there are things that are types or pictures of something else. Everything in the tabernacle is a picture or a type of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, except the oil and that's a picture of the Holy Spirit. And throughout the Bible, there's a great study in typology, and I've uh, uh, often looked at that throughout the years. Uh, and an eagle is always a picture of a Christian or the life of a Christian. Uh, now, can I say in the house of God, it should be full of eagles. But unfortunately, Brother Clint, it's not full of eagles. You know, in the house of God, you'll find chickens. They have no boldness. They have no faith. Mm -mm. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But it amazes me when the Lord gives us direction and we want to step out and do something, maybe something outside of our comfort zone, there's always some chickens come around. But, preacher, what about this? Buck, 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 buck. Worried. Miss Annette got a text this morning from somebody that's facing surgery at the end of the month and said they're not going to come to church because they don't want to take a chance of getting sick. But I promise you they'll go to the grocery. Where's your faith? Maybe if they had faith, they wouldn't have to have surgery. You ever think about that? You say, preacher, oh, the doctor says you have to have surgery. You're looking at a fellow about 12 years ago. They told me I had to have some major back surgery, and some folks got to praying, and some folks had some faith, and I still hadn't had that surgery. Hmm? Say, so what's wrong with your back? Nothing now. God hears and answers prayer. Hmm? Huh? But we got chickens in the house of God. I don't know. I'm just calling it like I see them. They have no faith, no boldness. Huh? Always afraid somebody's going to be offended. Listen, if the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God offends people, they'll just have to be offended. He's Lord. He's right. Mm. You not only have chickens, you have hummingbirds. You ever watch a hummingbird? Darts in and out. We got folks like that church, they dart in and out. They never come early, they never stay late. Uh, they never get involved, they just dart in and out, dart in and out, dart in and out. You better be at the back door, you're not going to see them when church is over. I mean, by the final amen, they've got three feet out the door. I'm telling you, they're hummingbirds, dart in and out. Huh? Hummingbirds never grow to be very big. You ever notice that? You dart in and out all the time, you're not going to grow very much. Mm, got to think about this, there's penguins in the house of God. Penguins are all dressed up, but they're very cold. Colonel Sanders. Not insinuating anything, but that's what they are. They're always dressed up. I've never seen a penguin on the beach. Uh, you go to a zoo, it's always 30 below in there when you go see penguins. Uh, they're cold. There's a lot of folks come to the house of God, they're dressed up. They look nice, but they're very cold. You know, the most warm, inviting place in the world ought to be the house of God. Mm. Folks ought to be made to feel welcome even if they're the worst sinner in town. Because we want to get them to Jesus. But there are some people that get all dressed up. They forget what God, garbage dump God found them in. They think they're better than somebody else and they're real cold towards people. Mm. Got some penguins. I thought about this. You got hawks. You know what a hawk always does? Attacks. I've seen it in churches where there's people who want to attack all the time. Hmm? Well, that brother James, what's his deal? They'll, they'll look for some dirt on brother James. You don't have to look very far. Matter of fact, you don't have to look very far at any of us to find fault. But I thought we were supposed to look at one another in eyes of grace and love and forgiveness and kindness and meekness, uh, considering ourselves lest we also be tempted, aren't, aren't we? But there's always some hawks around looking for somebody to pounce on. Hmm? Thank God we've run a lot of them hawks off over here, Brother Ray. Hallelujah. Huh? 
can't handle a hawk. Hmm. I thought about this. You got parrots in the house of God. We're supposed to be eagles, but you got parrots. You know what parrots do? They always repeat what they hear. Uh, we used to call them gossipers, backbiters. Hmm. Can't wait to hear something, so they go tell it. Hmm. Uh, can't wait. I watch people. You don't think I do, but I do. I watch Herschel and Melissa have a conversation. There'll be somebody standing close, acting like they're looking at somebody else, but they're listening. What are they talking about? Being nosy. So they can go tell somebody. Did you hear what Herschel and Melissa said? No, they didn't hear because it was between the Herschel and Melissa. You heard it because you had your nose butted in. But I'll watch out there in the vestibule. People will be talking. There will be people around listening. Can't wait to go tell something. Parrots repeating. You know, my in-laws used to have a parrot. Had an African gray. That bird was amazing. It was. And one time I was sitting there in, in, in the den where they kept the bird, and I had my Bible open. I was just reading the Bible, and that bird just started out of nowhere and said, Jesus loves you. I about had a Holy Ghost fit right there in my in-law's den. What I didn't know is every morning before my mother-in-law went to work, we'd go in there and tell that little bird, Jesus loves you. That, do- that bird could bark like the dog. It sounded like somebody's knocking at the door. He was running around all over that house. It was a stupid bird. Uh, better be careful. Might be some parrots around. Can I say there are peacocks? Peacocks are proud. They're big show-offs. Uh, look at me. Look what I've done. I'm so wonderful. Well, you've impressed everybody but the Lord. He's the one who makes the sunsets. You think he's impressed with us? Mm. I thought about this. you got some woodpeckers, especially Baptists. They're hard-headed. They're always banging their head up against something. Hmm? Got a lot of hard-headed people. Huh? This is amazing. Sometimes God has to knock us down a few rungs, make us sensitive. It'd be a lot better if we just open up our heart to the Lord in the first place. And then there's buzzards. Buzzards feast on dead things. Mm-mm. You know, somebody can live for the Lord for 30 years, but a buzzard will go back 31 years and find something they did and feast on it. Look what they did. Look what they was. Look where they were. Look, look, look. Feasting on dead things. If it's under the blood, it's, it's gone. What are you feeding on something that's dead, that God's done crucified? It's gone. Took it out of the way. Because they're buzzards. They're not eagles. So with all that in mind, I want to preach on this thought out of verse 31, where it says, They shall mount up with wings, here it is, as eagles. And I want to preach with God's help on as eagles this morning I've uh, done some research and some of you have been here a long time and I've preached on eagles over the years but I've done some more research on some eagles I got to thinking about we as God's people ought to be as eagles and can I say first of all that eagles are at the top of the food chains concerning birds every other bird is below the eagle there is none better can you imagine Ben Franklin wanted to make the turkey the national bird of America. Well, the guy we got in the White House right now does fit that bill, but that's a whole other thing, all right? Aren't you glad they chose the eagle? The most majestic bird. There's no bird like the eagle. It's at the top of the food chain. You and I as God's people, even though uh, we realize uh, outside the Lord, we're lower than a snake's belly. We're not worth the powder and take the blow away. Uh, outside God's grace, uh, uh, we ought to already be in hell. Uh, uh, but hey, the Bible says uh, that we're not of this world. Uh, we're not of the rudiments of the world. Uh, uh, we have been elevated in Christ Jesus to sit in heavenly places. Uh, we've been made a joint heir to the throne of Christ. Uh, uh, 
when you look around, uh, hey, uh, this is as good as it gets. Uh, everybody in D.C. has got to take a back seat to this crowd. This is God's crowd. Uh, this is God's family. Uh, we're eagles. Uh, we're majestic in God's sight uh, because we've been robed in His righteousness. Uh, we've been justified by faith, uh, washed in the blood of Christ. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the devil make you feel low. Uh, I don't listen to the devil. Uh, you're as an ego. Uh, you're at the top of the food chain, honey. Uh, there isn't any better uh, than be one of God's children. Uh, told this story before. It's true. There's two boys out playing ball on the lawn of the White House. And one boy asked the other boy, he said, boy, I'd like to meet the man that lives in there. He said, you want to meet him? Come on. And uh, Abe Lincoln was president, having a big state uh, 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 meeting with all of his cabinet members. It was during the Civil War. Uh, 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 and all of a sudden, uh, uh, the door opens up, uh, and here comes uh, Todd Lincoln. Uh, and he said, son, what do you want? He said, dad. Uh, or he said, father, this is boy. And I was just playing, and he said he wanted to meet the man that lived in here. Uh, and Abe Lincoln took time to meet that young man uh, right in the midst of something that was tragic going on. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, you and I have privileges. Uh, we can walk right into the throne room of God, uh, and regardless of what's going on, uh, our Father take time to recognize us uh, and listen to us uh, and make a way for you and I. Uh, hey, we ought to live as eagles. Uh, the eagles are at the top of the food chain. Can I say this about eagles? Eagles can be found in all habitats everywhere in the world. You know, some birds are only uh, you can only find in South America, and some only in Africa, and some only here in America, and some only in other parts of the world. But you can find eagles in every habitat, even Iceland. Uh, uh, you can find them in every habitat, uh, and you can find them everywhere. Uh, and I've got good news. Uh, hey, the gospel was sent everywhere. Uh, and you can find people saved all over this globe. Uh, hey, uh, listen, uh, uh, the gospel's not excluded uh, it's available to everybody for whosoever will can come and drink of the water of life freely uh, what a blessing I was thinking when brother James was singing that song about the Lord being our friend that he would walk the extra mile and he gave his life on Calvary for us I got to think about this brother Ron if the Calvinist was right Jesus wouldn't have had any choice he'd have had to die on Calvary but he chose to die on Calvary he could have called for legions of angels to come and get him down because uh, uh, he had a choice uh, and he chose to die for you and I. Uh, and listen, man has a will and man has a choice and all men can be saved for Jesus tasted death for every man. Uh, what a blessing. No matter where you go, you can find an eagle. You know what I found out about eagles, Brother Ray? There's eagles they call snake eagles. They eat snakes. Hallelujah for that crowd. Uh I'm going to get about four of them around my house, huh? I don't want no snakes around. Think about that. There are certain eagles that take on the, the snakes, and God has certain eagles that take on the devil head on. What about that, huh? Mercy, huh? That's a whole other message, huh? Can I say this? Eagles build their nests up high on a rock. And hallelujah, <laughs> we're built on the rock of ages. He was cleft for us. Uh, 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 we're built on the foundation of Jesus Christ and the apostles. Uh, him being the chief cornerstone. Uh, he is our rock. He is our high tower. He is our fortress. Uh, hey, he's the one that we're built upon. Uh, and those that are built upon the rock, let the winds come. Let the waves come. Let the floods come. They'll still stand. Uh, everything else is sinking sand. Uh, we're built on the rock. Uh, no wonder we can say not I but Christ that liveth in me we find that eagles are built on a rock then I thought about this eagles can carry loads seven to eight times their size now when the Lord says he'll not put more on us than we're able to bear he who knows your load can limit your load but I've seen some of God's people carry things a whole lot bigger than them 
by the good grace of God. There's folks in here this morning that are worshiping, but they got a broken heart because their children are not here, or their family's not here, or their spouse isn't here, uh, 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 somebody they care about's out in the world, uh, 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 but yet they can still come and worship by carrying that load. Why? Because they're an eagle. God's put something in them that even when the, the worst tragedies of this life can come against them, they'll still throw up holy hands toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because God has not only saved them, He's indwelled them. And when God lives in you, you'll find that you can do a lot of things you never could have done without Him. Eagles can carry a load seven to eight times their size. Think about that. Think about some of the loads you know some of God's people are carrying this morning because they're an eagle. You know who can't carry a load like that? A hawk, a buzzard, a chicken, a hummingbird. Uh, well, I want to be as an eagle, don't you? Can I say this? Eagles are the only bird of prey that doesn't look back right before they strike their prey. Before a hawk takes on its prey. He'll look back to make certain nothing's behind it so it can uh, come and steal it away. Not an eagle. An eagle never looks back. Uh, an eagle. <laughs> Philippians 3.13 Forgetting those things which are behind presses toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Are you listening? Uh, eagles never look back. There are some people that they want to dwell in their past life all the time. Uh, it might not be an eagle. Eagles don't look back. There ain't nothing back there to look for. Look to, huh? Huh? You say, what if, what if there's a prey, to, a, a bird of prey on your tail trying to, trying to get your prey? I don't look back at that because I've learned the Lord got my back. Mm. Uh, I want to be as an eagle. I want to look in unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Huh? Can I say this? Eagles have a very distinctive screech. Nothing sounds like an eagle. And can I say, the world can't sing our song. There's just something about the song of a Christian. There's just something about the voice of a Christian testifying and praising God. Uh, there's just something about uh, 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 something that comes out that's heartfelt from a Christian. Uh, the world don't understand it. Uh, uh, the world can't comprehend it. Uh, they certainly can't imitate it. Uh, even angels look in unawares to what you and I have today. Uh, there's just something about the voice of eagles. Hallelujah. Huh? Thank God for that. I gotta think about this. You know, eagles have very keen eyesight. They can see eight times farther than a human being. Hmm. Isn't it amazing? All this world lives for is football and partying and living for the weekend and living for this and living for that, living for little Johnny and living for little Susie, living for video game, living on. But isn't it amazing? Child God can look in the Bible, we can see what's ahead. We know this whole thing's about ready to wind up. We know the Lord's coming back. We've got we we we've seen the back of the book. We realize we win. We can see farther than the natural man. Through the eye of faith, we can see all the way to glory. Hallelujah. I've done seen New Jerusalem, even though I've not been there. So have you seen it through the pages of the Word of God? John gave me a glimpse, and that was enough for me. I'm I've been looking for that city ever since I got saved forty eight years ago, huh? Can I say something else about eagles? Eagles' eyesight is not only keen, they have an extra eyelid. And so when a, 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 a bird of prey, a falcon or a hawk gets on their tail, all they do is fly right to the sun. The extra eyelid kicks in so they can, they can go right to the sun and the, the bird following it, it gets blinded by the sun. Hey, when the hounds of hell get on us, all we got to do is run to the sun. One glimpse of him, they lose all sight of us. Are you listening? Uh, what a blessing to be an eagle today. Uh, we got some other things about eagles right here. I want you to get a hold of them. I'm going somewhere. Can I say this about eagles? It's been said that eagles fly above the clouds and fly above the storm. That's not true. There's some storms they can't fly above but they fly during storms. A lot of other birds hunker down during a storm. Not an eagle. Eagle flies during the storm. 
And can I say something about, else about the eagle? They've learned that during the storm, they just glide on the pressure of the wind. And can I say, I've seen some, I've seen some ch children of God go through a storm uh, that other people would collapse under. Uh, but oh, they'd get a wind from the glory world. Uh, and even though everything was collapsing around them, they just still soared uh, and still flew in the midst of their storm. Uh, I praise the Lord. Uh, we got a God uh, who uh, we renew our strength uh, that we can mount up as with wings of eagles. Uh, hey, and we can soar even in the midst of our storms. Some of the greatest testimonies of people I've ever known is people that had cancer but still soared. People that had heart disease but still soared. People whose spouse left them but they still soared. Uh, people who lost children and buried them but still they soared. Uh, why? Because they were as eagles. Mm. I bless the Lord for those that have learned to glide on the pressure of the wind. You can only do that through the grace of God, friend. Mm. Then I thought about this. And you've heard me mention that eagles go through molting periods. They say at some point in an eagle's life, it'll come down off of its rock, get down on the ground, and go through a molting period and pluck all their feathers out don't even resemble an eagle while it's on the ground Trevor it's absolute prime prey for anything a fox a wolf anything can can attack it overcome it while it's on the ground they say other eagles will come by and see that eagle down there and begin to call to it and screech at it and begin to encourage it to get it off the ground and back to its rock and that's what a real church does. When an eagle's not on the rock, they don't kick them. They don't uh, 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 put their foot on their neck. They don't keep them down. Uh, they rally around them and try and get them back to the rock and get them back uh, in shape to where they can soar again and be an eagle. Now look at the text, and I'm about done. It says... But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, semicolon. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, semicolon, or colon. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk, and not faint. It says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. And I've at that verse before and I've thought on that before and I can see an eagle standing out on the edge of the rock mounted up with its wings straightened out just waiting for the wind so it can soar again. But that's not what that verse means. That term mounting up deals with this. An eagle that it's rock and it wants to soar and it wants to fly and it wants to be that majestic bird it does inventory that mounting up means he looks at himself and any feathers that are damaged or marred he plucks out and then regrows new feathers so then at the right time everything's in place and it can soar without constraint, without hindrance, and it can be the eagle that God intended for it to be. I said all that this morning, say this. You have any ruffled feathers? You have any marred feathers? You have any damaged feathers you need to pluck out that's keeping you from soaring? Any of them got filled with some mud or something that's got you weighted down that you can't soar? Does not the Bible tell us to lay aside every sin and the weight which does so easily beset us? Is there something you need to get rid of so God can replace it 
with something fresh so you can soar as God intended you to soar all along. I wonder, can you mount up? Have you waited on the Lord and you ready to soar? Uh, can you really say that you are free from anything that will hinder you from soaring for the glory of God? If not, why don't you ask God to help you get rid of that feather that's holding you back so he can replace it with something that'll cause you to fly higher than you've ever flown before, cause you to be more majestic for his glory than you've ever been, cause you to be as an eagle. Quit being a buzzard. Quit being a chicken. Quit being a hummingbird. Quit being a woodpecker. Quit being anything. Quit being an eagle that's molting. Let God allow you to be the eagle he intended you to be all along. Is there anything you need to extract from your life that he can replace it with himself and cause you to be as an eagle? You know what's going to cause people to want what we got? They start seeing eagles. They've seen enough of the imitation. They need to see the real thing. Soaring like they've never seen anything soar. And desiring, boy, I wish I was an eagle. And we can swoop it down and tell me, you can be. Just come on. Trust the Lord. I wonder today, are you being the eagle God intended for you to be? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Is there anything hindering you from soaring today? Why don't you come? Ask the Lord to help you to mount up with wings as eagles. Anything keeping you from being the witness, light, and salt that you should be. Folks are coming. There's room for you. Friend, don't live beneath the privileges of being what God intended for you to be. They picked out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the illustrations, the pictures, and the truths contained therein. Now, God, help us this morning to be the eagle you intended us to be. Help us, Lord, to utilize all the fruit of the Spirit to soar higher than we've ever soared before. Now help folks, Lord, to take inventory and see if they're the eagle they should be this morning. And if not, help them to come. And God, do a work in their lives. And God, if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, if there's somebody here today emulating a bird other than an eagle, I pray they'd get right with the Lord. And God, help folks to just be as eagles. No telling how many people we could reach if we just be what you had intended for us to be. Blessing this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.